I bet you're settled for the details right now. Let's begin. In 2012, the Parliament of Ghana gave its blessings to the enactment of LI-2180 to ban the use of motorbikes for commercial purposes. In recent years, the government of Ghana and a section of civil society have clashed over whether or not motorcycles, Christine or Kada, which is fast becoming a major public transport mode, should be encouraged. Well, fast forward to 2019, Parliament is debating the Okada problem. This time, an MP is calling for a legislation of motorbikes for commercial transportation. We'll take you shortly to Parliament to hear the debate because the Deputy Transport Minister is also advocating a ban on the use of motorbikes after 9 p.m. He actually says between 9 and 9.30 p.m. Well, the same house, uh, but varied opinions on this subject. The public is not left out in this argument. There appears to be a growing school of thought that suggests that government can and must spend its way out of the Okada dilemma by completely banning its use. We'll hear from you on our social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll also hear from the streets as well. And then we'll be talking to some Okada riders. We'll share the Rwanda Okada experience with you. And we'll take you also to the Upper West region from where Rafik Salam will be joining us live from there. But let's take you to Parliament now and let's hear the debate on commercializing motorbikes in the country. Minority Chief for Munta Kamubarak is calling for the legislation of the motorbikes for the commercial transportation. As I indicated earlier on, he's calling for a review of the law that bans the use of Okada for commercial purposes. He believes that it will benefit the economy. The Aswasi MP says Okada and tricycles are providing jobs for thousands of youth and is helping them earn their livelihoods. He says legislation will help properly regulate that industry. The garbage that we produce in Parliament, the pickup of those garbage, are done by bicycles and the vehicles. We bring them here to pick up the garbage from Parliament. But Mr. Speaker, the point I want to make is that the major problem is an issue of discipline. There's so much indiscipline in the country, there's so much indiscipline on our roads, and people are not adhering. I look at the road traffic regulation. Mr. Speaker, beautiful regulation. If you look at it from A to Z, it provides guidelines on how everybody should conduct themselves on our roads. But clearly, we are not adhering to it. And would we argue that because a vehicle has had an accident, and, and so for that matter, we should, we should ban vehicles, we certainly cannot be making those arguments. And if we experience a plane crash, are we going to start arguing and, and debating that air safety is, is, you know, air travel is not safe for the country? I think what we ought to be doing is to enforce the laws, ensure that people are adhering to the laws that we have made. And the speaker, it is also important that while we talk about this, to look at long-term solutions. And one of the things that I would want to agree with the first deputy speaker is the issue of tracks for cycles and motorcycles. We've done it beautifully in the northern region. But even in the northern region, in Tamale especially, people are violating those same tracks that we have, we, have, we have put out. People are not using them, and they end up using tracks or lanes that are made for vehicles. So the major problem isn't an issue about the usefulness or otherwise of tricycles. The major problem is the indiscipline on our road. I mean, if are speaking of long-term, solutions. Probably we should start looking at monorail. Monorail or some other forms of tra transport that would make it easier for people to commute from various parts of our cities to the city centers for work. It's the truck truck drivers destroy some of the buses because they, they thought it was going to take away their threat from them. So they said we should stop them. Mr. Speaker, today, in, on our roads, 
an Okaba or a classical is ahead of you. Look at the text. The V shape of the red text. It tells you that the people in it are exposed to danger. Many of them, they are speeding and one of the wheels is off. Impediting the lives of people on a daily basis. Mr. Speaker, just, just last, late last year, late last year, a vehicle was taking my kids to school and a motorcycle drove into it, destroyed the driving mirror and ran away. Is it daily occurrence in the city? Why, why, why should we entertain such a system in the, in the country? Mr. Speaker, in every country, in every country, when we talk about improvement in living standards, today people are using maybe small vehicles. We expect them to go and maybe have be able to afford saloon vehicles. This is a relapse into history. It's a relapse into into history. And we're saying we say we should encourage this. Because again, I, I disagree. I disagree with those of them who are using the argument of convenience. And, and affordability. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the use of tricycles or motorbikes as a means of transport in this country, Mr. Speaker, we are all aware, especially those of us who come from uh, the private community, are fully aware that it already exists, that the safest or the quickest or the easiest way of somebody, a pregnant woman, moving from home to a health facility like that to today, the chances are that that person may be traveling on a motorbike to give it to access health care uh, in Abangu. So it is no longer an issue of whether we, we need to have motorbikes or tricycles as means of transportation. Mr. Speaker, the truth is that it already exists. And that is why I believe the call by the minority chief is for us to take a look at possibly legalizing this is a very essential one. Mr. Speaker, the a suggestion that this uh, means of transportation also causes accidents and other things cannot be under uh, uh, over uh, stated. Then, Mr. Speaker, so that vehicles and uh, any other means of transportation uh, provide an uh, improved uh, put forward a situation where people can be involved in an accident. Then, Mr. Speaker, what is the best practice in situations such as this? Mr. Speaker, you yourself, uh, a diplomat, and have served in a country very densely populated like India. Today we are told India's population is almost, uh, 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 even the uh, population is barely alone. It's almost 30 million people by uh, uh, estimation. Where the population goes about 3 million across the country in a year. This is the background noise. It is, yes. It is quite interesting that when we were to, to traverse the streets of Delhi, the number of tricycles you see on the road. And Mr. Speaker, surprisingly, I never saw a single tricycle scratch the, the, the side of another one. It is quite amazing how they are able to organize these things. Mr. Speaker, is it possible for them to rely on another means of public transport and take away the, uh, the tricycle? It will be highly uh, difficult. Looking at the size of the city and the number of people who live in there, I thought we could learn from the example of, of India, how they are able to organize this thing in such a way that it is no longer a wish, it is already happening, and it is not causing the accidents that we are playing will, will happen here. Mr. Speaker, let me see that the back of an account is a choice. It's a choice because if you are in the cities, it is a way of trying to avoid traffic. But in the hinterlands and beyond, that is your only means of transport to move around. Statistics from the National Road Safety Commission in the year 2010 had 200 riders in In 2017, the speaker, this shot up to 100% to 400. It looks so scary because they are being so lawless, so reckless, and their inability to conform to the road traffic regulations has been a major brother to all of us. 
As we speak them is a figure, five years have been there in the trip. Along about DB in Asham. They are also contributing to crime rates in this country. A few days ago, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Transport held stakeholder consultation on the Revolution 128, and we invited the Northern Public Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, assemblies in Greater Accra, the PDLA, the Road Safety Commission, the media, NGOs, and medical doctors from Polydu. And then the doctors told us the rates of these accidents that we were experiencing on our roads and the cost to the medical delivery. Because when they are brought into the hospitals, because of an accident, they have to look for money within the hospitals to take care of them before the company for a fee. So this is a major concern that we are talking about this speaker that we need to address. It is a mistake to the speaker that Okada is providing some services because of the shortfall of public means of transport in these areas where they work. It is also bringing incomes to their third we all agree. But going forward, from this forum that we have with all these stakeholders, we are going to replicate it in the other 15 regional capital to really find whether indeed it is feasible for us to look at it all over again. But clearly, as the law states, that it should not be commercialized. So you've had a number of arguments being made there by a number of members of parliament uh, uh, today over this Okada issue. Uh, and for, sincere apologies that we did not bring you the minority chief whip's uh, contribution, but we will bring you that. In fact, I do have my colleague who uh, corresponds for us from parliament in the studio with me, Joseph Opoku Gakpo. He will help us, you know, uh, conclude this matter. Gakpo, it's good to have you. Well, let's be let's begin with how this all. This was all concluded. It is, by the way, very interesting that even on both majority and minority sides, within these groups, they don't seem to agree on what has to be done. Yes, so there's a mixture of MPs on the ma ma majority side and with the minority side backing it and against it. So, for example, the conversation started with Munta Kamubag, the Aswasi MP, making right. the point that more than 40% of Riding, uh, you know, um, um, commuting right. activities mm. in his constituency mm -hmm. are done with Okada, and he thinks it should be legalized. It will create jobs um, going forward, and it's creating a lot of jobs for people currently. Okay. He got the backing of the MP for Madina, mm. the former minister for Zongo and Inner State Development, who is now minister of state, mm. um, Abu Bakar Sadiq, who drew uh, a link with his own personal experience when he was heading for a meeting with the uh, chief imam. He was late, he got off his vehicle, the traffic was thick, he jumped on the back of an Okada, and it took him all the way to the, the destination. And Interesting. So he's also backing the push for uh, its legalization. But okay. the opposition is from the majority leader section. Be be before you, you take us through the opposition, let me quickly acknowledge uh, my guest who will be helping us with this conversation, Dr. Enes Ajima. He's a lecturer at the Department of Geography and Resource Development at the University of Ghana. Dr. Ajima, thank you very much for, 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 for joining in this conversation. I'll be crossing over to you momentarily. Let's get the perspective from Parliament and then we can move on. So, Joseph, you were talking about the opposing views Those and where they're coming against, from. It's the majority leader says she meant to himself mm -hmm. and then the first deputy speaker of parliament, Jose Usu, who is the, who is actually a former chief executive of the Driver Vehicle Licensing Authority. So mm. he's considered a, a very technical person in the transport space. And he was drawing attention to how it's caused a lot of accidents all over the world mm. and lives have been lost. He mm. speaks of his own personal experience in Delhi uh, in, uh, when he was almost crashed mm. uh, sitting on the back of an Okada. And, made the point that the committee has done, when he was on the transport committee in the previous parliament, they done visits to hospitals and they were told of how people had lost their arms, people had lost their legs, thanks to Okada riding, and they are um, objecting to it. The speaker referred the matter to the committee on roads and transport, mm -hmm. that they should report back to the house on it. And uh, more importantly, the speaker was drawing attention to how the house itself can initiate moves mm -hmm. if they want this particular legislation amended and, and, and urged the, the committee that they should look into it and make the necessary recommendations as to whether they should go ahead and repeal that version of the act which was passed in 2012 which mm -hmm. makes 
using uh, motorbikes for commercial transport illegal, illegal or there should be a whole fresh legislation which will then spell out how the safety measures should be rolled out and how the regulation and all should be done. Okay, We're waiting so for the report on the I system. believe this was how the matter was concluded Precisely. in Parliament today. Referred to the Transport and Roads Committee. In and usually for such committee. referrals, when are they expected to get back to the House? Um, in this case, no specific timelines were given. Uh, sometimes uh, the Speaker does give timelines, but in this case, none was given. And it can be too sure. It could take weeks, it could take months, it may even take years. Because uh, a, a referral to the committee to look into the issue of roads would took almost a year and a half for the committee to return with this report. That's interesting. And uh, I, given that the, the MPs are not necessarily users of Okada, uh, I, I, I can safely assume that this is going to take much longer. Uh, but the interesting bit is this, particularly at the level of the committee, um, the ranking member on the Regional Transport Committee, mm -hmm. Kamiya Boja, disclosed that they received petitions from some groups, okay. including a group of um, Okada riders, and also another group that actually saw some of these motorbikes asking parliament to initiate a review to legalize the operation so this is something that has got into the attention of the committee okay. even before the speaker's referral today which then gives an indication they may want to fast track the process okay. because um and, and kamiya Boja make the point that uh, they, they they are fully convinced that it's being used already particularly in the rural areas where people True. are taking it to hospitals mm -hmm. you know and in a lot of the areas he mentioned and and, and, and and in the northern part of the country this is the major mode of transportation it, and momentarily we're talking it, about it, how there's been a government donation of motorbikes there. So, so so the problem is not riding on motorbike mm. the issue is is being used for commercial, for commercial activities, activities. so okay. the example was drawn that if I own a motorbike and I pick you and I take you to wherever you want to go, your home in uh, on, on the Spintex Road, mm -hmm. um, that is not illegal per the current laws. But okay. once I'm riding and demanding a charge from whoever the, 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 the rider is, that uh, becomes a problem. So um, uh, the, 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 the point is, it's being used, it's already happening, mm. and particularly in the north, yeah. you are told you don't see a lot of people using it for commercial activities, but people use okay. them for private activities, okay. which is completely... Unique. But then the problem again will be distinguishing between its use for commercial purposes and uh, its, its use for private purposes. Uh, which is what some of the MPs make the point that just maybe when, it's, when the law is clearly put out and it's clearly defined and the uh, appropriate sanctions are provided for those who flout it, then it can be dealt with. But what the MPs were actually saying is that a lot of people are already using it for commercial activities where they are charging money for it. And yeah. say it's more than 40% transportation and a lot of other MPs where people need to get to the hospital and they need okay. to get them back and pay for it and all. So it, it's being used for commercial activities. It's already happening. So they okay. just say regulate it and legalize it so you don't right. have to fight those. Who regulate are and legalize it. Joseph, hang on for me briefly. Let's bring in uh, a Dr. Enes Ajima into this discussion. Doc, thank you very much for your patience in holding. Um, you've listened to my colleague who's just coming from Parliament, and I believe that you've listened to the arguments that have been advanced in Parliament as well, both for and against. What are your own observations, having studied this area extensively? All right, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, and a very good afternoon to your viewers. Um, I think the debate has been quite exciting um, respect to the views, contrary views being shared from both sides of the floor. Um, it does appear that majority have the viewpoint that contrasts with the, that of the uh, minority. Mm -hmm. um, we have had occasion to do quite a number of studies um, since this Okada business became quite uh, ubiquitous or quite popular. Uh, within uh, a part of, of, of the world. Uh, but before I come to Africa, I must say that this is, you know, an event that has uh, sort of a continental footprint. Um, what I mean is that uh, quite a number of African cities that have um, or cut out motor tax operations uh, in Cork. Um, and so the idea is this. Um, when we learn from those cities, what are they doing right? What are they doing um, that ensuring that they are benefiting from the full dividends of, of the motor tax operation. And so uh, for me, my view, my initial thoughts is that um, given the mismatch between supply and demand, um, what I mean by that is that um, there are quite a lot of us who are in you know, dire need to move around each day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, not many of us have been our own vehicles. Um, majority of us rely on public transport. But as you know, uh, it has, I mean, you know, Anything so, um, in terms of efficiency, they are not doing so well. And then, of course, 
with the four million people in Accra, it means that we need, you know, uh, some, some form of mobility, you know, to keep us going. Right. Um, or cut for me presently is just a response, an inefficient response to an inefficient status. An inefficient. You 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 think that legalizing it is an inefficient response to what? It, what was the word you used again? No, what I mean is that the emergency for Qatar, uh -huh. it's an inefficient response to an inefficient status. Right. Now, what do I mean by this? We have a very, very inefficient transport system. And so Qatar just emerged yeah. in response to providing informal... To, uh, to, sort of bridge, to sort of bridge the gap. Now we are yeah, at the place where we are having a conversation. In fact, our lawmakers are having this conversation about mm -hmm. how we move on from where we are. How do we move on? Um, based on the studies that you've done, what can you say is the safest route for us to take? Should we legalize it or should we just say, let's stick to the status quo? Okay. And so I would like to give you the strengths and weaknesses of the research we've done so far. Um, of course, Okada comes in to solve a problem. But then it is set with a number of safety concerns. Uh, sorry. Mm. Um, if I may, I may run some few statistics to you. Mm, brief, um, briefly, sir. Okay. Uh, it does appear that reports from the National Road Safety Commission indicate that, um, in terms of roads, I mean, we have poor safety uh, records. Accra and Tema are based on leading, um, by the Ashanti region. Africa. But then, um, once we did some series of interviews, it's about the third time that we had a chance to. Uh, speak with the operators, uh, the stress computers. And then the feedback that we get is that if if, if we replace mm -hmm. such that they could operate, um, it, it would be quite a solution. Now, if you look elsewhere within the subcontinent, Kigali, for instance, mm -hmm. um, has shown the way, the way forward uh, in terms of you know, promoting private public partnership in uh, using ICT, the power of the smart to, as it were, uh, regularize chains of the uh, auto taxi operator in, in Kegal. I think that's something we can learn from. So it is working somewhere. But yes. an argument that I've also heard is that these countries that have legalized the commercial use of uh, um, motorbikes actually do have some regrets. And part of their, their regret is how this has increased crime, for example, how this has increased accident. And so you could say that it's been done somewhere, but what is their experience? Is this something that you also want to, now, we, we, people have said that let's learn from the experience of those people. Isn't this, this a position that makes sense? Um, so let me ask this question. Issues with criminality. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, criminals among taxi drivers, for instance? Do we then ban taxi? Do you have safety concerns with, you know, the uh, other forms of motorized transport modes? Do we then go ahead to ban them? No. I think given the mismatch between demand and supply, we'll be better off, you know, trying to streamline the operations. And I think, as I said, the uh, case that the offers a perfect way out for us to learn at the end. So the concern of safety, for instance, or finality, um, we have launched some app called Safe Motor where it operates just like Uber operates. Mm -hmm. And so they encourage unionized uh, people taxi operators to have it were registered with them. They take them through training on um, safety and good customer relations. Yeah. In addition to that, um, they, they make sure that they have smartphones that are a pretty safe motor app. Mm. And so after the ride, um, the, the pilot riders actually have the opportunity to rate them to rank them. Now, that ensures some, you know, inbuilt self-consciousness about safety because there's, there are checks and balances. Mm, that, that's some sort of safety measures there. But let me quickly engage my colleague here because um, I'm not quite sure that all of these other perspectives, uh, Joseph, 
uh, that the minority and the majority, those who, are, those who advance these arguments, that they are exposed to other examples out there, and the pros and cons of these examples, is this something that came up in their discussion? Uh, yes, in fact, the example being drawn with what is happening in Rwanda is one of the examples that was actually cited on the floor mm. uh, by, I, I, I think, Kwame Abuja, the MP for Adaklu, that it's working there, there's been the effort to regulate how it happens there, mm. you know, and so that is a template that Ghana can pick from. But um, those opposing it are also drawing attention to what they say is happening in Nigeria, mm -hmm. where there are even increased statistics of it leading to accidents and subsequently causing deaths and all. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and both sides are drawing attention. In fact, the first deputy speaker, uh, Osei Osu, was drawing attention to what he said he has seen in Delhi, mm -hmm. where there is a situation where uh, a, a, a number of the buses that you see mm -hmm. have have been damaged to a certain extent because someone riding a motorbike had run into them at one point in time <laughs> or the other and shared his own personal experience that right. he, he got a near-death experience riding on the back of an Okada from there. So, so, so they are drawing attention to the international perspective. Um, we wait to see how that will influence the decision that the they decision. will make eventually. The, the, the decision. It will be very interesting to know the decision that they come to subsequently. But Joseph, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed on what happened in Parliament. Joseph Apokugako is our parliamentary correspondent. And, and so, uh, Doc, I'm going to come back to you uh, so that we can wrap up this conversation. Um, it looks like, from what you're saying, crime is crime, and crime will forever exist. Uh, it, mm -hmm. uh, it is really up to the country's uh, 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 plan and strategy to deal with the criminality that you know comes with some of these things. But as far as you're concerned, Okada seemed to be a good alternative when it comes to de dealing with our transportation problems. And for you, the uh, parliament should, should have this consideration as they make that decision yeah basically so um that is the point i'm trying to make until we have an efficient efficient mass transport option like if they uh you have in a proper properly functioning bus rapid transit system um until we have these up and running okara is simply a symptom of the failure of the system and so i have the urge to move around i need to move from my home i need to come to the office and if I, if I have difficulty navigating, and Okara comes on rescue, why not? Mm. So, so, my, my so, so what, what would you, uh, assuming uh, Parliament came to you for some, some, some sort of advice, um, what would you tell them at this point? Well, my point is this. We need to, first of all, take a survey as to the number of operators that we have. Presently, we have no clue as to the exact numbers. Now, once we know them, and we sort of, um, identify if they are in some unions. Mm. Now we can engage the leadership on how best they could actually streamline and formalize their operations. And, and, and after that, I think we also need to ensure, for instance, if we go to Kigali, um, there's another project whereby they actually take the database of the motor riders, you know, their license, their um, registration issues, and also even their black groups. They are all kept in a database. Um, by a private entity anyway, but it works with the state. And so there's this state-private uh, partnership. And once you have this ongoing, uh, we can actually resolve uh, the issues about safety, or about um, you know, the, the inefficiency that we present. Mm. Interesting. Interesting perspective there. Well, at the moment, we'll have to keep our, our fingers crossed and wait for uh, the committee in Parliament because it's been referred. We understand that it's been referred. The Speaker has referred it to the committee to work on it and come up with their recommendations. So these are the conversations that we should be having whilst we wait for the committee to make their decision. Doc, I'm going to say a very big thanks to you for joining us for this conversation. And certainly we'll be coming to you more uh, on this whilst we wait for that decision from Parliament. Dr. Enes Ajumain is with the Department of Geography and Resource Development at the University of Ghana, and he's done an extensive work uh, as far as, you know, uh, transportation in urban areas, etc., are concerned. So that's a very informed perspective that he shares with us. Now, Doc refers a lot to what happens in Kigali, in Rwanda. So in Rwanda, if you want to use a taxi moto, as they call it, you must register with a cooperative union. Your bike must have a tracking device, that's number two, and you must be trained, number three. You must have two helmets, number four. Matilda Fomega has been there. She has a report.
Cedric has arrived from Ruyenzi town center to Kigali, Rwanda's capital. The ride from Ruyenzi in the southern part of Rwanda to Kigali is part of Cedric's daily routine. Kigali is the busiest destination for taxi motors in Rwanda. But you can't just buy a motorcycle and start a commercial business. It is orderly and properly regulated. You buy a motor, then you come to the cooperative. Which cooperative? There is uh, so many cooperatives here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you, you are registered after. But uh, the first, you should have driving license, right? License, yeah, okay. Driving license. So if I don't have license, I can't ride? You can't okay. ride. Really? It's forbidden. Yeah. It's forbidden. Yeah. Elias has been in the business for eight years. He tells me how disciplined the riders here are. After getting license, uh, you go in the association like cooperative, and then you go to ask the insurance after getting insurance. So you need insurance? No, I have it. Everybody has insurance? Yes. If I don't have insurance, I can't ride motor? No, it, the law is against you if you don't have insurance. Wow. You have insurance for life, even insurance for um, uh, the motor. Yeah. I see. And then you start to work. To work? Yeah. Taxi motors are the most convenient and affordable means to get through the city of Kigali. Kigali City accounts for over 60% of motorcyclists in the country, with the number of registered operators under the Rwandan Federation of Taxi Motor Riders totaling around 35,000. Rongugu Jendamo is the acting city engineer of Kigali. Nobody is working as an individual. Everyone has to be registered in a certain cooperative. The cooperative have got uh, leaders, and these leaders are the ones that we work together to make sure that all the discipline is, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, respected. So we make sure that uh, all the rules that we have set up, all the regulations that we have to follow, are all respected by enforcement. We have to enforce, of course, uh, you set up the rules, you set up your goals, you set up whatever you want to be established, but if you don't enforce, then uh, people will not respect it. So we make sure that uh, we have the enforcement part that is working very uh, strategically. I realized that for people within the cooperative, you can move from one jurisdiction to the other. How do you ensure that? Um, you know, on a daily basis, we ask for the documents that uh, they have so that I can make sure that uh, this one is working from the city of Kigali or is working outside the city of Kigali. Among the, the, the taxi motor drivers themselves have leaders and they are the ones that could be able to say that uh, this one we don't recognize him. So they report it and then uh, the case will be taken to uh, the competitive authority. Okada is a thriving business in Ghana, but many of the users lack discipline and regard for road traffic regulations. In fact, the trade is illegal in Ghana, but of course, there are still dozens of riders using their private motorbikes for commercial purposes. And the trend has been blamed on lax implementation of the law by city authorities. There are certainly many lessons to be drawn from the Rwandan experience. For Joy News, Matilda Vimaga, Kigali. So that's a report put together by Matilda Wemega when she went to Rwanda and it is coming from Kigali. And I still have Dr. Ajimai on the line because we'll be talking to him momentarily. We'll also be talking to Rafiq Salam who's just done a story um, about some donations of motorbikes uh, uh, in, the, in the upper west region. In the meantime, complaints by assembly members uh, that are unable to perform functions satisfactorily um, as a result of transportation will now be a thing of the past. Well, this is because government has acquired some motorbikes for all assembly members in the country. Deputy Upper West Regional Minister Amidu Chinya, who donated 442 of the motorbikes on behalf of the government to the Dean of the Assembly Members, 
in the Upper West Region said the donation is to enhance governance at the local level. So you see how it is being used or motorbikes are being used. And as Joseph said, it is not about the personal use, it's about the commercialization. We'll talk about that momentarily. But our Western Regional, our Upper West Regional correspondent Rafiq Salam has a report on that. Take a look. Assembly members are enjoined by the Local Government Act of 1993 to maintain close contacts with their electoral areas. They should consult their people on issues to be discussed in the Assembly and collate their views and opinions for presentation to the Assembly. Assembly members therefore play a unique role in exercising their functions, most especially at the grassroots. However, one major challenge they face is the issue of transportation. Most of them are unable to perform their formation tax due to lack of transportation. Government aware of the challenges they are grappling with acquired motorbikes for all assembly members across the country. 442 of them are in the Upper West Region. Deputy Upper West Region Minister Ami Ruchinia Isako donating the Supreme Star motorbikes on behalf of the government to the Dean of Assembly Members in the Upper West Region said it is to facilitate their work as local legislatures. The president and the government for that matter believes in decentralization. We need to get governance to the lowest level in our governance structures. And therefore, whatever the government needs to do to ensure that our assembly members are empowered and facilitated so that they can carry out their duties and responsibilities in their various electoral areas within the assemblies will be done. Dean of Assembly members in the Upper West Region, Karim Topie, thanked the government for the kind gesture and pledged on behalf of his colleagues to use the motorbikes for the intended purpose. We also want to assure the government that we are going to improve our duties or on what they have given to us and then to also make sure that our people or the decentralization that the government is targeting will also exercise it to the maximum. This is the second time in eight years that assembly members have been given motorbikes by government. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. So certainly on the street of Upper West Region, there's going to be a lot more motorbikes. Well, let me quickly engage you, Doc. Uh, I, I just wanted one quick question from you. Now, there's, a, there's an issue of categorization when it comes to the usage of motorbikes. Um, someone brought up a very interesting question about how we regard those who use the motorbikes for commercial, uh, for commercial but not human-related purposes. So, for example, those who, for courier services, for, and, and now we're doing a lot of deliveries as well. How do we... Put, how do we use this categorization um, in, the, in the consideration that the members of parliament are making? I mean, where do we place this? I think I can understand their, their frustration. <clears throat> uh, the point is this, that if someone is operating a business, the person is profit-oriented, and just that the person may want to engage in all sort of um, like illegalities, as it were, um, or, I mean, trying to shorten the system. And so the point is this, if you have a situation where someone is using for commercial purposes, then chances are that uh, accidents may be higher. But that's actually where I have alleged with the way the law has been phrased. Um, so I'm not sure if you have time. I just want to take it, especially one of the regulations that suggests the punitive measures involved in when you are caught using uh, in motorcycles commercial purposes. I mean, if you are a cops and you are into court, for instance, you are liable on summary commission to a fine of no more than 25 penalty units. Mm. So what we want to know, what is one penalty unit? It's, it's just 12 cities. 12 cities. 12 cities. And so for 24 uh, penalty units, that's what about arithmetic. It's roughly about 300 uh, cities. Okay. The law itself is not biting it. It's and not already, right. if you hit someone and um, there is a pilot rider how do you how do you how do you identify that this is a passenger you know he's not going to pay a fare so, so for so those who use, 
so for those who use um, um, motorbikes for delivery purposes, for courier services, for example, mm. um, would, you co would you categorize them as commercial um, users because they're not carrying human beings? No, because they're not carrying uh, human beings, the law presently doesn't, uh, I mean, before there's no fair exchange, I think that's the, uh, the defining characteristics of the law. Okay. One does it, and it's not fair after the threat. But for those who are doing those services, I'm actually, um, you know, in the case of the law, there's not fear that they are taking direct uh, uh, fare from their yeah, passengers, as it were, even though they're delivering side of the of time. Okay. Well, Doc, thank you very much uh, for your patience okay. once again. Uh, we've had him for quite some time now. Well, let's go over the lines. We're going to the Upper West region where um, Rafiq Salam has been, you know, have brought, that, brought us that report, which of course tells us that there's going to be a lot more of motorbikes on the street of the Upper West region, especially for governance work. Rafiq, let me quickly find out from you. There was an interesting question here. In, in the northern region or in the, the parts where you are, the Upper West region where you are, how often would people be inclined to use motorbikes for commercial purposes we know a lot of them use it for private their private transportation but is this is, is the commercialization a problem there as well um i will tell you that in the upper west region in times uh, in terms of commercialization of uh, 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 motorbikes uh it's not really here uh, in that course what we are confronted with is the issue of tight cycles and then uh, tricycles cycles and then uh, uh, popular repertoire, Bamba Kamu, and some also use uh, to carry load. And so uh, we are confronted with the issue of the tricycle, where if you take the tricycle out of the Apple Watch region now, uh, um, I can tell you that transportation will grant you a halt. So it's more of private use, uh, you say? Yes, as for motorbikes, it's more of private use here in the Apple Watch region. Okay. Um, if you take the status, uh, if you take a uh, Go into memory uh, uh, lane. Uh, 30 years ago, we have more bicycles as we have today, 30 years ago. Now, mm. after the year 2000, 2001, we started having an uh, increasing number of motorbikes in the upper West region. But motorbikes here in the upper West region are not used for commercial purposes. Okay. What I can tell you, Gifty, is that we are using tricycles for commercial purposes. Okay. And it has to deal with this issue of the what is popular referred to as the mama can do, yeah. mama can do. Yeah. And 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 then the tricycles, the one that they used to carry loads. These and then if you if you move to some communities in Apple West Virginia, yeah, like those in the hinterland. So if you ask them not to use the tricycles for commercial purposes, I'm saying that transportation in those communities will grant you a home. I see. Quite interesting. Uh, quite interesting there. But uh, but when it comes to criminality. Um, how it is linked to the, the surge of criminal activities. What does the police in the region say? Um, in the Upper West region, uh, I, I spoke uh, uh, to the Deputy Upper West Commander, uh, ACP Peter Ndokuri, and then they have come out uh, with some kind of uh, a convention that in the night, anybody who is riding a motorbike that is without a number uh, has to be arrested. And so that's what they have been doing for the past two, three years. And in the Apple West region. So you can ride motorbikes in what, but in the night, the police doesn't joke with those that are online. So. Thank you very much for that update. Rafiq Salam there joining us all the way from um, the Upper West region with what pertains there. Well, let me give you some information, a bit of information that we've put together uh, on the use of motorbikes, uh, both for private, private you know, use and for commercial purposes.
follow those graphics, you do know that uh, courier services, the use of motorbikes for courier services are allowed. They're okay. They're not outlawed at all in the in the ally there i would like to take your thoughts uh that you shared with us on social media facebook to be precise but let me take a very quick break when i return i'll take you through it do stay with us <laughs>